And it's not just the tattoos. Arthur Knight has been unable to provide any significant document, including a birth certificate, that would prove that he's not Nicholas Aliverdian. But our next guest says that poor Arthur Knight is the victim of a rogue prosecutor on a crusade to cover up his own dirty deeds. Joining us now is Lance Bastian. He's the latest attorney for the man he says is Arthur Knight, and the state of Utah says is Nicholas Aliverdian. Thank you very much for coming on the show. We appreciate it. So, just so I understand me, the, the position that you're taking, is the position that Utah prosecutors have picked a random guy in Scotland that are now trying to extradite and frame him for a crime some American named Rossi committed? Well, why they selected uh, Mr. Knight in particular, I, I don't know. But what I do know is that Mr. Knight is... Arthur Knight. He is a, a British citizen. He was born in Ireland. He's lived most of his life in, in uh, England. He's recently moved to Scotland, and uh, he's not an American. He's been there his whole life. He's, he's not Nicholas Rossi or Nicholas Aliverdi. And what do you make of the fact that Interpol and others have identified him, apparently based on DNA and his tattoos? Well, here's a problem, Dan. David Levitt wants to try this, court, or this case in the court of public opinion, and there's a reason why we don't do that. We try criminal cases in courts of law because evidence in a court of law before it gets submitted to the trier of fact has to be vetted. It has to be scrutinized by people on both sides. I've never seen the DNA test results that they claim to have. I've never seen any of this evidence that they say ties him to this, and he doesn't have one, he doesn't have any burden to show this certainly into the media, and he doesn't even have a burden to show this in court. They're going to have to prove these things, but they're going to have to do it in a place where everybody has an opportunity to look at the evidence, to have experts look at the evidence, to make sure the proper foundation is laid for the evidence, and then that's going to be the determination. But the, the problem here is that when somebody like Mr. Levitt, who's had issues with this in the past, attempts to try this case in the media and in the court of public opinion, uh, you taint a jury pool. Everybody who's heard anything about this from Mr. Levitt now wouldn't be able to sit as a juror because they're tainted, because he's talking about evidence that, that nobody has ever scrutinized and nobody's ever seen. Yeah, and that's an argument that is made in, in a lot of high-profile cases, et cetera, and during jury selection, you're typical, typically able to find uh, jurors who, who haven't followed cases. I've covered a lot of high-profile cases like that. Let me ask you, though, he's had some problems with lawyers in the past. He had one of his lawyers refer to him as the guy that they think he is, Nicholas Rossi, he fired him. Um, has he, when you took the case, did you say to him, you know, is there anything you can provide me just to give me some assurance that I'm not going on some crazy witch hunt here, um, that you're actually the guy you say you are, or you're not the other guy, or did you just take him at his word and say, look, I'll represent you as an attorney? Well, I mean, he has shown me some documentation um, that suggests to me that he is who, exactly who he says he is. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, I, even if he were guilty of, of the crimes yeah. that he's been accused of, I, I would still represent right. him. Right, he's Everybody's entitled to an entitled attorney. to representation. Yeah, no, I, sure. I, I get that. Um, let me play a piece of sound for you. This is a Rhode Island man named David Rossi, um, who is the father of, of Nicholas Rossi, and this is, uh, this is what he says about whether your client is actually his son. You're sure that's him? Well, that's my son. There he is, right there. That's Nicky. What makes okay. you think it's him? Because I know my son. I just know my son. That's definitely Nicky. He's over, but it's him. So, Dad has it wrong? I don't know. I don't know, Dad. I don't know. Uh, again, if he takes the witness stand and says that, then we'll address that at, at that time. But, but we're, just, we're not here to, to, to litigate this case in the media, and, and that's been the problem with this situation from the beginning. It's, it's wildly inappropriate for David Levitt to try to do so. And he's been disqualified from major cases in the past for that exact issue. In January of this year, he was disqualified from a double aggravated murder case that his office was prosecuting because he had to get up and make public statements that he shouldn't have made, and the court disqualified him from the case. Well, he will get a chance to respond to that. Lance Bastian, thank you very much for coming on the program. Really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.